John, this is really very useful. Um, I'm curious in, on this topic of, of the balanced mind of, of like basically brain health. Um, and this might be one of our last questions, um, but you mentioned the Buddha, you know, he would sleep two hours a night. And I don't know if you've read this new book by Dr. Matthew Walker called Why We Sleep, but it's basically making, um, makes a, a pretty good case for uh, the necessity of sleep in regulating all sorts of basically every system in the body, including uh, many aspects of, of brain health. And I'm curious if you would be able to say something um, to, to balance that. So this advice from Western medicine, which is you know, sleep medicine is really getting um, more and more specific in its, in its advice, of, you know, for an adult, you know, seven to nine hours. Whereas when you go to a monastery, especially a Thai forest, ascetic forest monastery, you know, you hear, oh, the Ajans say sleep four hours a night. If you sleep any more than four hours, hours a night, you're just being lazy. And, you know, the, the general uh, admonishment, sleep little. Mm -hmm. and, and that means basically, you know, four hours a night. And it's, um, yeah. What, what do you think about that, Ajahn? Do you think it's... Well, I would say uh, that... Uh, first of all, the the exception an arahant uh, is very rare, and they're they're an except they're an exception. So uh, theoretically, uh, according to the Abhidhamma, the arahant doesn't dream, or and they don't dream because they don't need to. So the the re one of the reasons why we sleep <clears throat> is because we need to dream, and the dreaming is helpful to our mental well being and so forth, and it shuffles things around and gets the memories all set up and so forth. So when we we don't apply this uh, demand uh, for sleep to uh, somebody who's finished the, the practice, but everybody else has needs sleep to some degree. And uh, part of the four hour diagnosis there is from the Vinaya, this idea that it, they describe the monk. So he, in this, in the first watch of the night, now the, we, we're very interested in time units and so forth, hours, because of course, in the time of the in the in the life of the Buddha, there were no hours. The, they had watches, uh, which were approximately uh, four hours, uh, a bear, and I must say, for, approximately four hours. There were no watches. There were no precise timekeepers. So, and the average length of day and night in in middle India, in the area of India is about 12 hours each. And it doesn't vary very much because of, you know, uh, you're not far north or far south. So the uh, daylight is fairly standard. It's it doesn't vary seasonally very much. Few minutes. They, their only precise measurement was noon for in order not to eat past noon. And they put a stick in the ground to get a shadow and a, hopefully on a day when there was some sun, you could tell when noon was. And the other clock was the moon, which is a 14 or 15 days, you know, sort of half moon, quarter moon. The senses of time is very uh, elastic. So when they describe in the suttas that, okay, in the first watch of the night, the monk walks and sits. In the middle watch of the night, the monk lies down on his right side in the lion's posture and, and sleeps with mindfulness to arise. Then in the third watch of the night, the, my, the monk walks and sits. Now, that sounds like from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. you meditate, sitting and walking. From 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. You, you sleep in the lion's posture on your right side. And then at 2 a.m. sharp, you get up and uh, you sit and walk until dawn, which is six o'clock, and then you go off on your alms round. But uh, that, what, that is not what is quite what is said. What is said is that in the third watch, it doesn't say precisely at the crack of 2 a.m., you get up, no. Sometime between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., you rise. Sometime between. The, so 10-ish, you know, it's all approximate. Eh, 9 or 11, 10-ish. You go to, you know, 
you lie down to have you sleep. And sometime before dawn, in the, the, end of, the end of the third watch is dawn, sometime before that, you get up. And so it's anywhere from four to eight hours is what you're talking about there. Now, some people, you know, on some days, you'll be up at four. I mean, you know, you'll be up at two. And some days, you'll, you, it'll be four. Or some days, it'll be six. <clears throat> because the variation of, uh, of, of heat and journeying and uh, mental activity and so forth is going to change all that. But it's not like there's no, uh, this precise clock time is, is just absent from that. You know, so it's it's much. It should be interpreted as it's a it's more a flexible kind of uh, period of time. And uh, some people, and, and including monks, uh, if they really attempt to do this four hours continuous, so you see that they nod a lot. They they they're they're making up for that in snatches of time. So you can't fool a body. Uh, you you you. There's a. It's not up to you how much you sleep. It. There's something going on there. It tells you how much you sleep. What the Buddha says is don't indulge in sleep. So don't, you know, when you're bored, just say, oh, God, I, I, just, I don't have anything to do. I think I just lie down and go to sleep. I just want to make it disappear. So he doesn't want you to have that attitude where you're sleep, you know, trying to lie down, sleep 16 hours a day or something like that. So that's indulgence. But I think surely you must have enough sleep to have clarity of, of, of your mental faculties you must have uh and you can't eat too little you will die right so that's what is meant by eating enough uh and he he almost did die because he ate too little and before he was the buddha and then once he becomes the buddha he maintains his weight and you have to eat enough to maintain your weight if you even lose one ounce every three days you're going to die in a short time so you have to eat enough, but not too much. Not, you know, you don't have to be fat, but you have to eat enough and you have to sleep enough. And what that is, is nobody else can tell you what that is. Yeah. You, everybody's clock, you know, the, this, you're, you've got a bi biological clock and some, some people, they're midnight people, you know, some are early morning. They're cheerful as bird song in the early morning. I don't understand those people. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, and some people are late night owls. Yeah. Father John, thank you so much for answering our our questions. It's a uh, it's a little bit a little past six p.m. That's getting close to Tanis Bonai's bedtime. So uh, yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> or at least mine. But, uh, yeah, it, it's it's wonderful, Tanajan, to uh, thank you so much for giving us giving us your time and sharing the Dhamma with us. And um, yeah, do you have any any closing words or closing closing thoughts for this session? Uh, just uh, uh, wishing you both well and uh, interested in your continuing project. And uh, please feel free to call me again sometime. Yeah. Thank and you, when this pandemic is all over, come and visit me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pacha. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure. So thank you so much. Okay. Bye-bye.